more Purple Banditos. Welcome back to our Let's Play Pokemon Omega Ruby version. I'm Purple Rodri. Last time we explored Moss Deep Space Center and found out that with the combination of the Pikmin Rocket, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Hole, and Lakitu's Cloud, there was going to be some weird projection of the end of the world here in Hoenn as we know it. Or, you know, something like that. I, you know, I, I might have misread it. I'm not too sure. I just kind of heard there's like an asteroid coming or, or you know, just completely going to fly at us and just take us down and knock us out and pretty much obliterate any life forms off of the planet. Not just Hoenn, but Sinnoh, Kanto, Kalos. Uh, so we're today we're uh, pretty much just going to try to save the world. You know, just a natural, normal freaking awesome day we are back here in route 114 guys and we are going to be entering meteor falls because this is where we were told we were supposed to go if you guys remember back again look at this beautiful music i am loving uh the music around here it's very nice it's calming it's peaceful and as some of you guys may know i mentioned to you last time that you know the last episode it was my last time in el salvador for a while i was flying out and today i am finally back home Yes, I know. My flight left at like 2 a.m. Uh, from El Salvador Monday night. So like Tuesday at 2 a.m., whatever that would be. Tuesday at 2 a.m. And then, you know, I finally got here. And it has been, honestly, one of the longest days of my life. It has been like a chaotic 48 hours. I've pretty much just been moving into my new place, uh, moving in with one of my friends. So, you know, that took a long time. Had to move everything out all in one day. This was with like three hours of sleep. So it was just very, very exhausting, but now it's all been taken care of, so I'm glad to just be able to sit down, play some games, and it's just, it's a, it's a good time to just hang out and uh, get things going, you know? Things are going to get back to normal now, the whole usual routine, I think you guys know what I'm talking about, with school coming back up again and everything starting over, you just got to get back into the swing of things, and that's kind of what I'm doing. I went ahead and forgot Earthquake for Surf just for now. We do have the TM for Earthquake, uh, and we can just easily remove, you know, the move from the move deleter. So there's nothing to worry about. I just wanted to make sure, uh, you know, we were going the right way, which I'm pretty sure we are. Now, as I mentioned to you guys, I'm seeing all these waterfalls and all these sorts of things, and I wanted to tell you guys little stories of what I experienced, you know, while I was in El Salvador. And one of the things that I actually had the chance to do, I think it was on the third day for me just getting there. And as I said, I wanted to do things that, you know, we're going to stand out, that weren't going to be, you know, completely normal and, and things that, you know, everyone has done and just things like that. And I was, you know, with my family hanging out and I decided, you know, it would be really cool to do right now would be if we went white water rafting. So me and my cousin Jerry, you know, we convinced everyone. We we're like, yeah, this would be a lot of fun. And then we decided to, you know, get everyone together. So I had, you know, like my little cousins, my sister, uh, Jerry, and like my aunts and uncles. And we headed over there, my grandma. And it was really cool. So it's a really, really pretty area. I might eventually have to put a picture up of it. I actually didn't. I put a picture on my Instagram of me actually whitewater rafting. So if you guys want to check it out, I'm pretty sure I'll have my Instagram in the description. A lot of the pictures I'll be talking to you guys about El Salvador and everything will be in the description. So it'd probably be a good time to follow it. Uh, and, you know, we decided to do it. So we split into two rafts. We had me, my cousin Jerry, and uh, my sister, and then another girl cousin of ours there in the rafts. And, it, and, you know, we went with, like, three guides. And then my aunt, uncles, and, like, my little cousins went in the other one. So they told us that our raft was going to be the one that, you know, was aggressive, you know, crazy, adventurous, going in, the, you know, flipping over, whatever it was. And immediately, me and my cousin Jerry, we were a little hesitant. And we were like, there's no way this is going to be that crazy, you know. We've done it before here, and it was really easy going. I kid you not, we all get into the raft. We're prepared. They get us our helmets, our life jackets. They give us our oars. And we get inside, and we start going. Maybe two minutes, two minutes into the whitewater rafting, my cousin Jerry's overboard. <laughs> like, the funniest thing. Like, we bumped into, like, a wall, and then he just goes flying overboard. And I'm like, okay, all right, this, this time... Things might be a little crazier. Things might be a little tougher since uh, these instructors said they're going to take it, you know, a, a tougher route than the first time we've done it. Because we've done it at this place before. It's called uh, Apusunga in El Salvador. And that's pretty much where you can do white water rafting in El Salvador. Uh, and it was pretty cool. So I decided, I was like, all right, cool. Well, this was fun. Uh, and we just keep going down the river. And, you know, they're taking us down some dark roads, some, some hard paths. Uh, but it's exciting. You know, I like challenges. So I was having a lot of fun with it. 
and we kept on going and you know we had a lot of close calls because they kept pushing us you know to go harder and harder and then the good thing about the whitewater rafting is that they have little challenges for you as you go along the way which was what i truly enjoyed uh you know last time i did it you know it's the same exact challenge what they'll do is they'll get this rope and they'll put it across the river and they'll try to make you pretty much pull yourself along the rope across the river like horizontally across the river you know and they'll try to make you you know pull yourself across it and now whenever I did it it was like a year or two ago I almost made it um, so basically this is the strategy to doing it this is the strategy okay so you pull yourself across the rope and then right about the middle part because remember you're in the water uh, the current of, of the river will overtake you so it, right when you feel it overtaking you you have to take a deep breath and then go completely submerged underwater and pull yourself across, okay? So that's literally what you have to do. You have to submerge yourself and pull yourself across. We also just got a really cool TM, by the way. Uh, Dragon Claw, just a heads up if you were looking for it. So you have to submerge yourself and pull yourself ac across. Now, the first time I did this, a couple years back, years back, I got really, really close. But I ended up not making it all the way across. Which was, you know, very disappointing for me. I really thought I was going to do it. No one did it, and I was really disappointed. So this year, I told myself, you know, we were doing it. I was like, you know what? This year is going to be the year that I actually do it. I managed to make it across, which was absolutely awesome. I'm glad. You know, I, I made it. Uh, but, you know, I was pulling myself across, and right at that point where it was, like, getting ready to submerge, I, just, I was like, this is it. I'm going to do it. I held my breath. And just pull myself through just pull myself through just kept on going just kept on going and I was just like I'm not gonna give up and I kept pulling through and right at that point you know the the guy who was on the other side he tapped me and he's like you made it and I was the first person of like all the groups to make it and I felt absolutely so proud I was like yeah I was like yeah this is good stuff I made it um, but it was really fun you know I had a blast uh, another one of my girl cousins actually made it you know they 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 lowered the difficulty for her you know for girls they like raise the rope so they can kind of pull themselves and they don't have to go underwater uh but nonetheless she made it too and i was just very proud you know very proud of myself to have made it because this time around i wasn't giving up and i just thought you know no matter what i'm gonna make it and you know my cousins and my uncles were like nah no way you won't like teasing me and then i made it and they were like wow great job and you know i was really glad that i had the chance to make it i felt very proud of myself and i was like you know this was good this was very good for me and i'm just really glad that I had the chance to do it, you know, and it was a really great experience. So we kept, you know, going down, rafting, and then there was also another, I guess you could say it's a little bit of a test, not that much of a test. It was the, like a big high dive. They have a bridge, you know, you, you raft up to it, and then they have like this huge bridge above you, and you go up and you like jump off, and that was really fun. It's kind of scary because they make you hang there. Uh, you know before you they let you you let go and you're just hanging there and then like the guys the instructors start talking to you And you're like, all right, I just want to let go and then you finally do uh, But it was really cool. I had fun and you know, we finished off the rafting We ate some great food and it was one of those experiences that are just a lot of fun You know even on the way back up because you raft all the way down the river and then it's like a 20 30 minute ride up because you know whitewater rafting down there it would they took like two three hours like it's a it's a long river you know, it, it took a lot. I, I was banged up a lot because we'd be bumping into things. And I was like, you know, swerving into the middle of the raft. And it was it was pretty tedious. But overall, it was an absolute blast. You know, it was like two, three hours. We were exhausted. And then like a 30-minute ride up in like a truck. Uh, but it was really nice. It was fun. Like, I'm glad that I had the chance to get that experience and do it again. And I was really proud of myself. So, you know, guys, if you ever have anything to learn from this goofy story, it's that, you know, if you don't succeed it doesn't mean that you won't ever do it it just means that you have to come back and uh knock it out you know and i feel like that's something that i had the chance to do and i am so glad uh that i did it and i you know i'm very very excited for it i'm, I'm just really glad that i had the chance to do it it was such a great experience and it was just amazing you know getting to share that with my family and actually knocking these things out and uh, going through this i'm just really excited and yeah, as I mentioned, you can check out the picture of it if it, you know, if you guys want to see what the rafting looked like. It's on my Instagram. I post a lot of pictures of my real life stuff on there. That's pretty much where I put everything. Uh, it's me, my cousin Jerry, and our little cousin Sophia. And uh, it's really nice. So I'm glad, you know, I was able to share that little experience with you guys because it was something, you know, pretty meaningful to me. I had a great time in El Salvador. And as I said, 
as we go, you know, we're gonna reverse Benjamin Longbutton, the movie thing, Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Longbutton, I don't know what I'm thinking, I've, I've been watching Harry Potter, you know, but yeah, I'm gonna tell you guys stories like that, little by little, I hope you guys enjoy them, I like sharing experiences in my life with you guys, I think it makes it, you know, that much more fun, and so much more worthwhile, and look, it's Steve-O, we finally made it to the top! Rodri, we have the meteorite shard, and I have come to understand many things as I suspected might happen. Allow me to introduce you. The honorable lady you see before you is a descendant of the ancient draconids. Yes, I am one of the draconid people. One of those ancient folk ta tasked with passing down the knowledge of mega evolution with the great lore of Lord Rayquaza, who was the beginning of all. Since times long gone, Hoenn has repeatedly suffered great disasters. At times, the destruction took the form of a huge meteoroid, which fell upon our land from distant space. At other times, the primal versions of our own super ancient Pokemon brought us to the brink of destruction. Each time, Lord Rayquaza has saved us from doom. The chosen Lord Keeper, standing before a stone that shone with rainbow light, offered up a wish to the Great One. And Lord Rayquaza's body was suffused with a brilliant light and transformed. In his transformed state, Rayquaza's power is more devastating than ever before, overcoming even the super ancient Pokemon with all their primal power. Power. A rainbow colored stone, an invocation from the law keeper, and a Rayquaza unlike any ever seen. I see it does resemble what we know of the process of mega evolution. Yes, it does indeed. A Pokemon, a person, a stone of power, the bonds that tie them all together. The transformation of the Pokemon that occurs as a result of this phenomenon was called mega evolution by later peoples. So the mechanism for mega evolution was discovered as a result of the first meeting between humanity and Rayquaza. Hmm, but I have one last question. That Law Keeper you spoke of. The Law Keeper is the one who has inherited the knowledge and power to summon Lord Rayquaza when disaster imperils the world. The true Lord Keeper of the current generation is the one called Zinnia. The disaster that now approaches our planet as it has twice before, Zinnia has been trying for some time to avert it in her own way. To draw Lord Rayquaza to our sphere, she joined a certain organization that thought to revive the super ancient Pokemon. She taught them the secrets needed to bring back these threats and summon the Great Dragon itself. And now it seems she travels the land, scouring the world for keystones. So it was true! As I had suspected, that woman who appeared at the Space Center was one of the Draconids! But I never dreamed she was involved in the attempted revival of the super ancient Pokemon, and full knowledge of the power they held, fully understanding the terrible changes they would wreak upon our world. Still, she helped bring that situation about. Did she give a thought to the many people in Pokemon whose lives were put at grave risk by her actions? Could she accept the inevitable sacrifice of so many lives in order to protect the planet from the coming meteoroid? Bounds must rule this world. History is doomed to repeat itself. While our people have overcome many disasters in the past, it was always through great, great sacrifice. Yet we have continued to struggle to persevere peace for as many years as we can. That is how we have protected this world upon which we now live. People Pokemon, all nature, and yes, even you. I don't know exactly what you plan to do, but do you believe that you are not sacrificing anything for your own protection? Xenia will follow her convictions until the very end, even knowing the sacrifice that they will require, even if the sacrificial blade is leveled at her own heart. Is that right? I understand. Thank you for everything. What is this? This vague sense of apprehension and my new intuition has often proven true. I'm going back to Rustboro first. I have to get back to Devon. Well, guys, a lot has just been explained to us. A lot to take in. That Silverhead Dreambo said we, he was headed back to Rustboro. As you can see, we were told that Steven is heading back to Rustboro City. And I feel like the only thing we can do now is follow in his path. It seems like Zinnia is the protector of Rayquaza, which is really crazy. I did not expect her to be that. But guys, it looks like next time we're going to continue from this point and make our way to Rustboro City. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been telling me that we have Rayquaza and Deoxys coming up. So I'm probably going to do some training. If you guys have any tips, let me know because I really don't know how close these legendaries are to catch. It could be next time. I really don't know. So if you guys have any tips on it, please let me know. Make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. For whitewater rafting, for all the fun. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.